I'm usually over passionate when I do my Monday motivations because that's just who I am and I get caught up into these messages. But as I was thinking about, you know, what to really speak to you guys about this week, it, you know, it dawned on me, right? Like, because we all go through these highs, we go through these lows and I, and I talk to y'all because if you're in here, if you're in this live right now, then you are exactly like me. You are a person who is trying to make moves. You're a person who's trying to change your life. And, you know, it ain't always going to be about me coming in here and being overly passionate. Sometimes I just want to talk to you. And I think tonight that's what it's about. It's just really talking to our community, encouraging one another, y'all. And as I was sitting and, and I'm thinking about this new journey I'm on, you know, I'm, if only y'all knew the amount of time and the amount of hours that I spend really just thinking and, and trying to formulate my words. And even when I'm doing my interviews that I'm putting out there this, to you guys, like it's a lot of time that comes with planning that. And there's a lot of time that comes with asking the right questions, not just questions that any old journalist would ask, but questions that we as movers want to know. What, what can I possibly ask that I want to know that I know everybody who thinks like me, everybody who wants to get ahead just like me, they want to know. So there's countless hours that goes into this thing. But even as I'm sitting there and, and I'm trying my best to put in the work, I'm human, y'all. Like, like you get discouraged, you get frustrated, and, and I'm always transparent with y'all. And I try to keep it a buck week over week over week with y'all because I want all of y'all to know because I know... A lot of y'all, you got your businesses, y'all, y'all are entrepreneurs and some of you are first time. Some of y'all have done it, you know, once it didn't work out, you're doing it again and you got back up on that horse and you're trying to make it work. But I get in here because I need y'all to know that we all go through the same thing week over week. And it's it, sometimes it's hard to just keep yourself motivated. And as I was sitting and I'm, and I'm preparing and I'm looking at my numbers and I'm like, damn, these numbers ain't, you know, they not what I would want them to be, right? But sometimes I have to take my own advice because the numbers, the numbers don't properly reflect the impact. The numbers don't properly re reflect what it is that we're doing out there and how people are receiving what we're doing out there. So I don't want y'all to fall into that trap. And, you know, as we're doing this, we're trying to give new birth. We're trying to, to, to birth a new life for our family, you birth a new life for ourselves. I know everything there is to know about the Bronx, but I ain't working hard so that my legacy stops in the Bronx. I'm working so that I can birth something that long years after I'm gone, people can say the Bronx is where he started, but this is the impact he made on the world and this is where he ended up. And, you know, I sit and I think about a pregnant woman and, you know, we've all seen these pregnant women and from the outside looking in, you know, it's something that is so cute about a pregnant woman. It's something so aspirational and you look at these pregnant women and you're like, oh my God, you know, she's pregnant and she's so cute and, and she's gonna be giving birth one day. But do you think a pregnant woman looks at herself the same way? Like when she look in the mirror, she feels unattractive. She's uncomfortable all the time. She's tired. All she wanna do is sleep, but she got to go through that pregnancy. And right when that pregnancy is coming to an end and she goes into the labor and in that water break, from what I understand, that is when the most pain sets in. That is when that journey that she was on for the last nine months, it comes to a head. She is in pain. She don't know if I can deliver this thing. Right now, she is minutes, maybe seconds away from new birth. But she don't want to go no further because it is just too painful. And it is right around that time when the doctors say, push. You got to push. You got to give me another one. Just one more. Just push. And right before long, you hear the screaming and, 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 and the baby comes out. And it's that yelling that signifies that it is new birth into this world. And I'm telling y'all the same thing. I know what you're going through is hard because I know what I'm going through is hard. I know when I look at my numbers and I look at all the work that I'm putting in, it don't add up sometimes. 
But I'm telling y'all, like that doctor would tell that pregnant woman, push. It is darkish right before the dawn, y'all. It, it, it right next. Like sometimes when you are going through this thing, and and it is nothing but pain, and you don't see the residual effects of all that you're doing, and it's and and, and you thinking, I done spent all my money, I done wasted all this time. I'm telling y'all, you have to push because that new life is right around the corner, and I truly believe that. I believe it in all my heart. I've seen it done time and time again. And I know that if you just push, it is right there. And even as I was sitting this weekend and I'm going over, you know, like thinking to myself, like, damn, is anything I'm doing making a difference? Something miraculous happened. Something that just never happens happened. Yesterday morning, I'm going to church. And usually when I'm on my way to church, I don't get no calls. And I got a random call from my good friend, Datu Faison. And he hit me out of the blue. This is Datu. He used to manage Carl Thomas back in the days. Big time dude in the music industry. And Datu hit me clear out of the clear blue sky like, yo, Prez, I just want to tell you that, you know, I didn't call you for anything. I didn't call you to ask you for nothing. I didn't call you just to talk. I just want to let you know that what you're doing is making a difference. What you're doing, the, the, the content that you're putting out there, I see the growth. You are making a difference in my life. And then he was like, yo, Sean, like, I've watched you do this for over two years now. And I love, like, it feels like you're just coming into your own. And I had to correct him. I'm like, yo, dad, I've only been doing this for a year. And he's like, huh, what? Like, a year? He's like, I would have never known that. I thought it was so much longer. But the point of the matter is... When you don't think nobody's looking, when you don't think you're making any strides forward, God's going to send a sign to let you know, keep going, push. That for me was, a, it was a push moment. Then my mother called me out of the clear blue and she said, I want to tell you about one of the brothers in her church down there. Brother, I've been knowing for many years of my life and his name is Sean Hayes. And Sean told my mother, just let Sean, meaning me, just let Sean know I watch him every week. And that brother got an anointing on him. Do you know how crazy it is for a man to tell you you got an anointing on you? I'm like, Ma, say that again. What did he say? She says, Sean, I'm just telling you he watches you every week and he wants you to know you got an anointed on you. But it's those types of calls that come out of the middle of nowhere. That let me know that the journey I'm on, it's the right path. It's the right path. And even though the numbers might not reflect it, like I say over and over again, you can't confuse the numbers for the impact. You can't confuse the numbers for the progress. You can't confuse the numbers for the difference you are making in somebody's life right now this second so keep doing what you're doing and push y'all push and even as i was getting these types of calls my man mac who is basically the guy behind me even getting in the music industry one of my best friends in the world mac told me yo sean i watched that jack canfield interview with you last week and it was incredible that was probably one of the best interviews you had ever done and i went out there and i bought all of his books and I'm like, yo, Mac, you actually went and bought a book based off a conversation I had with this man? He was like, yo, it was incredible. Of course I went and bought that book. But again, you can't confuse impact for the numbers. Stop doing that, y'all. I know some of y'all, you got products and, and, and you're selling your service and nobody's coming to your website week over week. No orders is coming in and you're looking and you're like all of this work I'm putting in and I'm not making one sale. Keep going. Keep going. And here's another thing that I've got that I have to tell y'all, because I know for me. Even last week when I was sitting there and I'm saying to myself, what am I doing wrong? And I called my man Dave Bracken out and on the West Coast. And I asked my man Dave, yo, Dave, how's it feeling to you? Is there anything that I could be doing different? He's like, no, Prez. Like, what you're doing is right. It is all the way right. They just ain't caught up to you yet. 
but keep doing what you're doing. And I'm telling y'all, you are enough. You're enough because right when he told me that, that was on a Friday. By Sunday, I started to get all them confirmation calls. Over the weekend, people are DMing me, talking about, yo, Sean, your words, they have changed my life. Because of you, I'm starting my business. Because of you, I was about to shut my business down. I'm going to keep it going because of you. And I'm telling y'all, I don't have to switch it up. Even when I'm thinking, yes, we can always improve. I told y'all at the top of this, I put in hours and hours and hours of work because I want to be the best version of me that I can possibly be. But I'm enough. I don't have to change. I don't have to sound like any of them other speakers out there. I don't have to deliver like any of those other speakers out there. The Bronx raised me. And I speak like a kid from the Bronx. And it's because of that that so many other people who are in the, the, the Bronx all over the United States are gravitating to what we're doing here, y'all. Y'all don't have to change. You are enough. And please keep that in your head. And, you know, I, I just want to talk to any of the women out there. Because you need to hear what I'm about to tell you. And you need to listen very closely. I know a lot of y'all are trying to figure out, number one, how can I get a man? And number two, how can I keep a man? I'm going to say that one more time. Y'all are trying to figure out how can I get a man and how can I keep a man? And I got a news flash for y'all. You ain't getting a man nor keeping a man going to South America getting your butt done. You ain't getting a man or keeping a man doing implants and all of this stuff that you think is what attracts men. That ain't the way it work, y'all. And the minute that you wake up and you understand that the person you are, the person that God blessed you to be on this earth to be, you are enough. That is when you are going to learn this is all I need. I just need to be the best version of me. Long before people was getting butt implants, your grandparents and their grandparents was married for 40 and 50 years. What was they doing different than what you doing right now? They didn't need to go nowhere and, and, and have no surgery done and have no work done. They just were the best versions of themselves that they can be. Stop confusing what you do in the bedroom for what's going to keep a man. Because trust me when I tell you that ain't happening. Stop confusing what you see in the mirror for what's going to keep a man. You can do all these body enhancements. You can do all of this extra stuff you want to do. But believe me when I tell you, a man wants somebody who is going to love him and be by his side, be the Bonnie to his Clyde. And that is when you wake up and understand you don't need to sex a nigga to keep him. You don't need to sex this dude up to get him. A man wants somebody who is the best version of themselves. That is what is attractive, y'all. And even me, y'all know I come from music. And I look, especially me, in the Bronx. And I sometimes sit and I think because us here on the East Coast, we ran, we started this, this hip-hop thing and we ran it for many years. But it wasn't until... Those dudes, N.W.A., Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eazy E, and all of them decided that they was going to do hip hop their way. Their way up into the West Coast went on the map. It wasn't until people like Swisher House. It wasn't until people like Jermaine Dupri and So So Deaf and so many of them labels down south decided, I understand y'all started hip hop, but we got a whole different culture down here. What we're doing down here is not reflective of what y'all are doing down up there. And we're going to embrace what we do. And it wasn't until then that they took this hip hop thing and they never gave it back. You are enough exactly as you are. You don't need to go and make all these extra changes. Enhance yourself. And sometimes I get pissed because me, like y'all, I watch these motivational speakers and I see so many of them and they're like, get up early, go to sleep late, rah, 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 rah. But they ain't never built a, 
a, a successful business. They can talk it, but they ain't never walked that walk. Now me, I can tell y'all, I stood toe to toe, side by side with a man named Sean Diddy Combs for many years of my life. Worked alongside of him for 20 plus years. And while everybody's screaming, wake up early, this, that, and the third, well, guess what? Sean Combs is not a morning person. I repeat, he is not a morning. I was the person taking him to the radio first thing in the morning. And I had to get up two, three hours before time to go get him, to wake him up. And I'm only saying that to y'all. It ain't no problem. Like sometimes there's going to be times where you have to do things that are out of your comfort zone. There's going to be times where you have to take your skill set and enhance it. But I need you to understand that you, you as you are, you are enough. And I watched that man change music, change the business of music. I watched that man walk into boardrooms with baseball caps, jeans, and sneakers on. He made them come to him. Now, was he prepared? Did he have people like Derek Ferguson, who's in this live right now, preparing notes and doing all the due diligence and all of that stuff? Absolutely. But innately, he did not have to change himself. And for any of y'all who have these businesses and these bright ideas and you're looking the way everybody else is doing it, they're successful doing it this way. So now you're going to go that way and you're going to imitate and emulate what they're doing. And I'm telling you, you don't have to do that. Stand true to who you are. Be authentic to who you are because that's what's going to separate you. That's what's going to make people say one day, I want to be like her or I want to be like him. You can't be a better version of them than they can be. They're just being who they are. Be who you are. You are enough. With that said, I'll leave it there, guys. I've been ranting and raving for, and I thought I wasn't going to get hyped this week. But hopefully, God willing, I said something that sparked something in y'all. Y'all know I love motivational Mondays. I love to come on here and, and, and just... Hope gets God willing. If I just said one thing that makes somebody who is about to tap out, somebody who is about to say it's over, I can't go another day. Push. Push. You got one more day in you. You push. That new life, that new birth is right around the corner. Now you push. Wednesday night, 7 p.m., y'all. Y'all know how we do it. We open the floor up. It's Warrior Wednesdays in honor of my man, Michael Smith Jr. Warrior Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Mondays, please spread the word, y'all. 7 p.m. every Monday, Motivation Monday. Shout to my man, DJ whatever. I see you, brother. Donovan, I see you. Who is that? Uh, Donna John, Donna John, I see you, I see you, I see you. Sorry about that. Hopefully y'all got something out of this. Please go support this week's video. My man, Jermaine Miller. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. Let's spread the word, y'all, because somebody needs to know what we're doing in here. Somebody may not be able to afford a fancy education at a, at a, at a prestigious college. And it's just something like this that would just help them to get to the next level. Let's spread the word and let's continue to lift each other up. I love y'all. I'll see y'all on Wednesday night. And please, on Wednesday, let's make sure we come with questions. Let's tell a friend to tell a friend and come in. Any questions that you have, y'all know it's a safe place. Y'all know what we do on Wednesday night. And I'll see y'all then. Ready, I'll see you. Reg Hunt, I'll see you. Peace, y'all. One.